the mechanisms behind the decline are myriad and interesting. So I want to discuss them. Of course, as a cell biologist, I always want to look at the mechanism. So I'd mentioned this earlier, do Leydig cells actually become less efficient? This is where the metabolic connections become particularly fascinating and where I think we can find some hope for intervention. First, let's talk about mitochondria. Testosterone synthesis is fundamentally a mitochondrial process. The rate limiting step in steroid hormone production, which is all the sex hormones, it actually it's getting cholesterol, which is the raw material for all sex hormones, testosterone included, into the inner mitochondrial membrane where it can be converted to a molecule called pregnenolone, which is the precursor to all steroid hormones. Now there's a little bit of fundamental endocrinology baked into this discussion that I'm kind of assuming you know, and that might be dangerous on my part as a teacher. The steroid hormones are their own class of hormones, separate from any others, where they're all built on a steroid nucleus or a cholesterol molecule that's been modified. So all sex hormones start with cholesterol. And you have to get the cholesterol into the mitochondria. This transport depends on proteins called STAR, S-T-A-R. That stands for steroidogenic acute regulatory protein. And also another one called TSPO, which is a translocator protein. Both of these decline with age. Research that was published in the FASIB journal just a few years ago demonstrated something interesting. They found declining TSPO, that's the translocator protein, that these, a decline in the TSPO levels are associated with deteriorating mitochondrial structure, specifically the cristae. These are the inner foldings of the mitochondria where so much of the cell's energy production happens. You know, if you think of something like the electron transport system, all of that's located on, that, on the crista, these, the inner mitochondrial membrane. When the architecture or the structure of the mitochondria is, is compromised or shifted, it falls apart, so does the cell's capacity to make testosterone. But here's something that I find particularly interesting. They also showed the same study that promoting mitochondrial fusion, essentially helping the mitochondria maintain a long connected reticular or stringy structure. Remember, the word mitochondria is derived from the Greek word for thread which is mitos. Mitochondria are long stringy things woven through the cell. They found that when they could really promote a metabolic milieu of greater mitochondrial fusion, they could restore testosterone production even in older Leydig cells. Remember the Leydig cells are the testosterone producing cells of the testes, the male gonads. This suggests that the decline is not inevitable. It's potentially reversible if we can support mitochondrial health. Indeed, this touches on some of my own work from my lab, where we've published before that ceramides, a very highly active lipid or a type of fat within the cell, can mediate forced mitochondrial fission. Uh, and, and we found one final point before I kind of revisit this. Chronically elevated insulin is a key signal for uh, mitochondrial fission or ceramides production. So basically we found increased um, ceramides would force the mitochondria to pull apart. That's the fission aspect of it. And when you have forced the pulling apart, this touches back on this paper from the FASIB journal in 2022. If you're forcing mitochondrial to be in a fission state, you're reducing their ability to make testosterone. Now, I mentioned insulin for, because in my study, that same paper, we found that elevated insulin is a stimulus for ceramides. Now, there are other stimuli as well, like inflammation, but I, of course, want to talk about insulin because I don't talk about it enough. So by now, you surely know that insulin resistance is central to virtually every chronic disease, but the connection to testosterone is both quite direct, but very often overlooked. There was a very good study published in 2005 that examined men across a spectrum of insulin sensitivity. What they found was striking. There was a strong correlation between insulin sensitivity and testosterone response to various stimuli. In other words, the more insulin resistant a man was, the less testosterone his Leydig cells could produce when they were stimulated. What makes this finding so important is that this effect bypassed the pituitary gland. So it wasn't the brain 
that was sending weaker signals to the testes. It was the leading cells themselves that were less capable of responding to the signals coming from the brain. This is a direct effect of insulin resistance on testosterone production at the gonad level.